Remember these things? Do people still use these? Yep. They have some specific features that were great for agricultural use and some commercial applications, including golf courses. Adrian Sanchez here for Sprinkler Warehouse. Let's talk about impact rotors. Impact sprinklers were invented in 1933. So these things have been around for about 85 years. They have mostly been replaced by gear-driven rotors. Gear-driven rotors are much quieter and highly efficient. So if you live on a cul-de-sac or you can hear your neighbor's TV, you're almost certainly going to want a gear-driven rotor. However, for agricultural use, the impact rotor is still a very good way to go. Impacts use a lot more water, tend to need higher water pressure, and are capable of throwing water for a wider radius. For example, this Aqualine I-100 is a one-inch impact. Its radius is from 57 to 80 feet. If you buy an impact made from brass, they can last a really long time. Impacts are a really good idea when your water source is a well, pond, or some other dirty water source. They have a pretty wide nozzle, so it takes quite a bit to clog them up. Some impact sprinklers are not adjustable like this one. Now compare that to this one. You can see all the little doodads on this one right here. The non-adjustable one is always going to cover a full 360 degrees. If it's throwing water too far, you'll have to reduce the water pressure going into the sprinkler. To do that, you can buy a pressure regulator for each sprinkler. Pressure regulators come in various pressures. Warning, choose too low a pressure and the sprinkler just isn't going to function properly. Another way to reduce the flow of water to the sprinkler is at the valve. Automatic valves that have flow control allow you to adjust the flow of water. This is the Aqualine I-100A-014. It's a good example of a brass impact rotor. This is your diffuser screw. To reduce the distance the rotor is throwing water, you turn this screw so it breaks up the stream of water coming from this nozzle. The further you screw it into the stream, the shorter the distance it will throw water. That is, the shorter the radius. To get the maximum distance, you unscrew the diffuser screw until it's completely out of the way of the stream. Some models also have a diffuser control flap like this one. There you go. It can adjust the arc of the throw. And some plastic models have a control dial on top, which you can use to adjust the radius. And this one also has a diffuser screw. This is your trip collar, also known as the arc adjuster. With these two lined up like this, you'll get a three quarter arc. This is the trip pin and when it hits one of these prongs on the trip collar, it reverses direction. So if you want to narrow the arc, adjust these together until you get the arc you want. See, this is a half circle. This is a quarter circle. If I want a full circle, just push up the trip pin like this. Now you'll get 360 degrees of glorious gentrification. As one of the reviewers on our website said about this model, once you turn it on, don't get in the way or you'll get soaked. This one is built similarly. These are the trip collars. This is the trip pin. It pops out of the way like this, or down like this. This plastic model by Aqualine is very similar. Trip collars, Trip pin, disengaged, engaged, disengaged. If you got some debris stuck up in here, use a wrench to unscrew this nozzle. Gently put a wire in here and dislodge the crud. If you've got some hard water buildup, use a vinegar and water solution to dissolve and clear out the buildup. Don't ever drill out the nozzle hole larger. Bad idea. The rotor probably will not work correctly if you do that. Never spray any part of this with lubricant. I know putting lubricant seems logical, but it's actually counterproductive. Lubricant will just gum it up. Impacts are non-pressure compensating. So if you've got a line of impacts on the same line, the ones closer to the water source will be getting higher water pressure than the ones down the line. The way to compensate for this is to put inline pressure regulators like this one on all of your impacts. That'll bring the pressure down a bit. They won't be able to throw as far, but it'll give you consistency between the rotors. This is a Hendrickson 3 quarter inch inline pressure regulator. They come in various pressures. You don't want to set the pressure too low 
or your impact rotor won't function. Do not connect it to the impacts like this. You should always have some sort of PVC fitting between brass and plastic parts. The brass can easily break or stretch the plastic. The PVC fitting is easy and cheap to replace. Notice that this pressure regulator has an arrow on it to tell you the flow direction. Don't connect it so the flow is backwards. It can't do its job that way. This Hendrickson pressure regulator has the added benefit that it will not allow water to flow through it without having something restricting the water attached to it like a sprinkler head. So if someone swiped one of your sprinkler heads or it got, somehow got knocked off, the water would stop. As opposed to not having one of these and then the water would flow unrestricted, flooding your field and wasting a ton of water. It also means you could unscrew the rotor and work on it without having to shut off the water. Rotor clogged? Unscrew it and clean it out. Screw it back on. You're back in business without interrupting your watering or having to walk back to shut off the valve. Remember, Sprinkler Warehouse has everything for your irrigation needs so your trees, lawn, flower beds, and gardens are lush and beautiful. And if you have any questions about our products, chat with one of our superb customer service agents on sprinklerwarehouse.com. They really know their stuff and they will get you squared away. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for helpful tips, tutorials, and general sprinkler instruction. For Sprinkler Warehouse, I'm Adrian Sanchez. Later, irrigator.